Soul City Entertainment. Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? Hola, mis amigos. Welcome to another episode of the Talk My Credo Podcast. <laughs> that is right, man. I know we've been gone for a couple of weeks, but your boy is back. I had to go off the grid a little bit, a little vacay to Mexico, put my toes between some sand and drink a shit ton of tequila, because I tell you. When they say that tequila is Mexican water down in Mexico, trust me, that is not a myth. Everywhere I went, I lied to you not. We we touched down in the airport, and by the time we got from the airport, got through customs, and got to our rooms, we had two bottles of tequila. And, it, and I went through them shits really quick, real quick. But man, it is good to be back, refreshed, excited. I missed y'all. I know a couple of y'all hit me up like, yo, what's up? Everything good? I'm like, we good. We good. But trust me, I was off the grid. I, I didn't even charge my phone. I just threw it wherever I threw it. And I was out, out in the mean streets of Mexico. Um, But man, <laughs> I was outside. I don't know how you say outside in Spanish, but El Outsado. All right. Don't, I'm, I'm just, I'm just joking. Wow. All right. So, ah! <laughs> so. I got my fam here in the building, man. It's so good to see y'all. KT, how you doing, girl? I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> she good. <laughs> she, I'm good. She is, I don't even know what you call them dancers, but that's okay. I feel you. I feel you. I like that. <laughs> Nas, my guy, man. How you doing, man? I'm, I'm trying to find what, what outside means in Spanish to help you out, you know what I'm saying, before you get canceled. Yes. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I started to Fuera look it up de? myself, but I said nope. Fuera de? Fu Fuera de. Uh, F U E R A. Hold on, wait a minute. And then another word yes. is D E. So it's two words. Fuera okay. de. Okay. That's what, that's what I'm getting. Fuera de. Fuera, Fuera de. Fuera de. Yeah, yeah. Yo soy Freda de. Hey, talk to me nice. I don't know how to say that in Spanish. You can just say Freda. You can just say Freda. F U E R A. You can say Freda. That means outside, out, away, abroad, without. Bet. All right. Freda. That's right. I was Freda. Yeah, hey, that, that's my Spanglish right there. Hey, but what th one thing is for sure, <laughs> one thing is for sure, no, I was definitely that, motivated. No. I was like, you Fuera. know what? I'm going to go ahead and. I'm <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and learn Spanish. I was like, all right, I've been, I understand it, but don't ask me to speak it. Don't ask me to speak it. But uh, yeah, El, El Alzado was nasty. Oh my God. Y'all don't cancel me for El Alzado. <laughs> <laughs> but man, listen, we, we got, we got a whole bunch of stuff to go through, man. It's, it's just been, it's been a crazy two weeks. So, you know, we got to start with some rigidity because that's just what we do here at the Talk My Credo. And, you know, I just want to start with some final destination type stuff where I just felt like, you know what? Somebody just want this person dead. Like this person just was not meant to make it through the day. And what I'm speaking of is there was a, a happenstance that happened over in California where there was a, a patient who needed a heart transplant. And y'all know how those things where y'all seen John Q y'all seen seven pounds. Y'all know how that stuff goes. It's crazy. And, you know, Will Smith, Denzel Washington, they told the story beautifully. So, you know, the struggle of getting on these type of lists and getting this stuff done. There was a patient that needed a heart. They found a heart. They flew the heart from wherever they found it over to Los Angeles, where the patient was waiting. to. I was just going to say that the only thing that comes to mind is, dang, Jesus. Like, what is <laughs> You don't, you don't want to help a player out? You just going you gonna to do me like that? Just let them drop my heart like that? That's what we doing. I was. I, I mean, I've been fasting and everything. What you doing, man? <laughs> been trying to been, go to church on Sunday. You know, been doing. Oh, yeah, man. and you know when I turn down my plate and dirt and dirty. It was, a, it was a real heartbreaker. Like, <laughs> oh, man, you do you you will give them the disclaimer that yes. 
I, I heart, will give the disclaimer. Yeah, the heart good. was retrieved okay. and the, the procedure went through. Everything worked out in the end. But for that moment, right? That mo- it just seemed like you know what? No, okay. It's all good. Yeah. Okay. You know, I just want to make sure I, we want we want the we want the viewers we want the listeners to know that yes, the, the, the person that needed the transplant got the transplant. Everything is yes. all good. But but yes, that heart went through hell to get to that body. Just want to put that out there. Yes, it did. But I just got to say something. Give me a second. Hold on. One second. Hold on. <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Hey, yo, players, y'all, y'all heard about Amorion last day at the hospital? He done t- had the nerve to tell the doctor he, uh, I apologize, um, you know, but I got an ice box where your heart used to be. <laughs> I told him, don't, you got to, listen, you're, you're a doctor now. You know what I'm saying? You know, you no longer a singer. You know what I'm saying? You seen what you did at Versus, dog. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you need to stick to the surgeries, but I don't, I don't think you're going to have a job no more at LA Hospital. You know what I'm saying? Sorry. One, one second. I'm sorry, son. Let me put you down. I, I, yeah, yeah. Wish you had a heart in the box. Okay. <laughs> Anyway. I can't. <laughs> Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Now, speaking of which, the perfect segue. All right, so y'all know, I know y'all know, because it's been a few days, damn near a week. I know y'all saw that versus. I don't even have to tell y'all who was in it because I know y'all know. But just in case, y'all know there was a versus that happened between Omarion and Mario, right? Mm. And, but before that, there was a tag team. That featured Ray J teaming up with Bobby Valentino going up against Sammy and Pleasure P. Now, I don't really have a descriptive way to give it justice of how this went down. So I just need y'all to listen. There's a two minute recap of how this went down and it, it will do so much more justice for you to just sit back, relax and try not to cringe too much because oh you in for a ride <laughs> check this out if we oh try that we could oh hey. somewhere the climb oh no I mean, this <laughs> Is, is this versus or Baby, me? you got a body. Like a <laughs> they told him to stop. <laughs> Y'all give it up for Jeremiah. Y'all give it up for Jeremiah. Man, Some people wish to be a superstar. Wish to have a fancy car. Wish to have a million bucks. Go. Well, I wish I do be in love. So feel me, pretty baby. I make one wish and I wish it all on you. To my baby's born. 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 Y'all know how all NBA players felt? My son right there. My oldest son. Y'all know how the NBA players felt the next morning after Nate Robinson got knocked out by Jake Paul? How hurt we was? How the whole basketball family was just demolished? That's how the R&B world need to feel today after that versus last night. The whole R&B world, and I know it ain't y'all singing, but y'all should all be like, damn, we took an L last night. I'm just saying. I love the old R&B. I still listen to Michael McDonald, Patti LaBelle, and all that type of stuff because this new shit is just, I, it ain't real. Shout out to the real R&B, but y'all took a hit last night, fam. Um, so... React. <laughs> Just oh, react. This is what I got for you. <laughs> what, what you got? <laughs> is, that, <laughs> is that the Ray J dance? Yes. That's what it is. That's what I got. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, man. That was bad. It was bad. <laughs> it was really, really bad. I mean, he wasn't nowhere near the oh, key. Oh, man. Like no. nowhere near it. 
And I'm like, Hi. Yeah. you got Brandy for a sister. It didn't. None of it trickled down at all. I'm just. Your daddy can he, sing. He didn't read any of the vocal Bible. He did not read the vocal Bible at all. Yeah, he blasphemous. Yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. But the funny thing is, there were so many singers that featured that night, and couldn't and none of them sing except for Mario. None of them, with, with, with the exception of maybe one or two. I would say Mario and Sammy. Yeah, Sammy. Could that sing, they could yeah. at least, at the very least, hold a tune. But everyone, Bobby Valentino. Ray J, Jeremiah, Amarion. He brought out um oh yeah, and Tank. Tank came out. Well Tank and but, you know, that, that was yeah. a that was a that was a small feature. Mm-hmm. So Tank, Mario, and and Sammy. But then uh, everybody else, and there were so many different singers that they brought out there. Not one of the motherfuckers can sing. Man. I didn't even plan on watching it. Didn't plan on watching it. Yeah. I just happened to be uh, chatting with my girl and we were on Instagram looking uh-huh. at something and I happened to look and saw that Versus was live. So I was like, oh, who's doing yep. Versus today? Because I didn't know. I didn't keep up with it or anything. I happened to click on it and I got caught up because it was, I couldn't look away. It was just a train, <laughs> a damn train wreck from beginning to end. And I couldn't look away. It was it was a beautiful catastrophe. Absolutely. So I'm going to turn it over to one of the participants, one of the highlights of this verses. I'm going to turn it over to Ray J. And he's going to tell us just from from his words, just a, a recap. So 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 Ray J. Explain yourself. Go ahead and the, just just what happened. Wish about Marion. Wish I marry Marion. <laughs> Wish I got a pleasure be all because I need the weed. If I had one wish. Hold on, I'm sorry, y'all. I didn't mean to sit there and just scream like that. I know I'm supposed to be a singer, but um, you know I got my baby with me. Wish my baby has some legs. Tired of holding. Would have hurt bad as hell. You know what I'm Forgive me, y'all. My delt, my my rear delt is burning right now because my kid. Ain't got the rest of his body going on. Wish my baby had a shoulder. All right. Thank you. <laughs> um, hold, hold on. Hey, hey Ray J, is, is, that, is that filter making your tongue white? Is that, is, is that a filter that I'm... <laughs> hey, yo, listen. Let me tell y'all something, yo. Shout out to all my non-binary niggas. You know what I'm saying? All my straight niggas. <laughs> Need to show love to my non binary niggas. You feel me? Listen, <laughs> this was Mel Ratchet Ho at his finest. At his finest. Listen, y'all said Sammy and Mar- Mario could hold a note. I listen, you know what? When it's your hit song, of course you can, but no. Like, no. First of all, Mario looked like a straight street killer. You was in LA, hot ass LA, <laughs> with a full on mass shooting. Calabar trench jacket on. What was that about? Like that? Oh my god! Not cool. <laughs> Best moment of the night for me was when Mario told the Morion, "You can't spell a Morion without Mario." That was the mic drop. I ain't care how many calls of Morion. Yeah. Mario, you oh, won, Mario yo. was petty yeah. as hell, boy. Petty, and I love it. But, but, but honestly, <laughs> that's how you win verses for yeah. me, yo. You gotta be petty. Hit yeah. you with the with, and this is the thing. You gotta have at least five songs, five bangers. Mario has one. A more- no, he does not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yo. On some real shit. Listen, listen. No disrespect, because this is the second most watched. Uh, this is the second most watched verses in history. I think between it, because yeah. module it, two of them are like in groups. So if you like all combine six artists, yo, I think they only have 12 hits all together, yo. Y'all can count them up with me if you like. You know what I'm saying? I I, I, I wouldn't argue with you. I would say I about 12 or 13. 12 hits on that stage, yo. <laughs> Santana. <laughs> Joel Santana over there like, hey, yo, I could have did this shit my motherfucking self. What's this about? Like, you know what I'm saying? 12 uh-huh. hits, yo. It was a combined 12 yep. hits, yo. I think Ray J got three. Ray J got, I, yep. I wish... In the one of doom, do 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 do. It's wait a on minute. Popping. It's on and hey, wait sing. a minute. Is that Brandy's yeah. brother? Was that when he didn't even sing? He 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 was he was doing that. No, he he finesse wrapped it. He finesse wrapped it. He was like, oh, yeah, hey, you're right. Like, oh, so yeah, yeah, I got it. it. 
Amazing brand. Dun, 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 dun. Brandy's right over there. Look at her. Dun, 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 dun. Let me get my kid. You know, I ain't singing. Dun, 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 dun. My kid is popping. You know that shit. Dun, 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 dun. The whole way through, it was male ratchetness. Honestly, um, D Ray Davis, that's his name, right? D Ray Davis from um, mm-hmm. Out. Hey, yo, on yep. some real shit. Because it's, yep. it's 1998 to 2010 music. Yo, you should have got Jalil White to host that shit. I would have loved it more. His Urkel outfit. No matter of fact, the Stefan Arkell outfit. Oh, oh, oh. Mm-hmm. oh, oh, oh. We need that TGIF uh, background with hanging with Mr. Cooper paraphernalia all around. Like, oh, oh, my God. Yeah. Like, that's what should have happened. Yep. The, the cast that's of Step by happened. Step. I just need three white people from Step by Step to be in the front row. And that's it. That'd be great. <laughs> It'd be a great time. It'd be 1980. Oh. I I don't think they I don't think they're doing too well with the step the step by step folk. So you might want to go on ahead and get full house or something. <laughs> yeah, they're they're caught up in those college scandals <laughs> and stuff like that. But so yeah, I, I'm not sure if they would. That was made full it. house. Oh, oh that was full that house. Because right, right. that 930 yeah. slot is always inhabited by somebody four like every four months. It's a new show. They always get canceled. Yeah. That 930 slot. You ain't family yeah. matters before house. Your ass is true. <laughs> <laughs> it is done. But did it you hear that? Uh, so Ray J, Sammy, Pleasure P, and Bobby V went live. I think it was Monday or Tuesday. And these niggas talking about making a group now. If if you were to name this group, what would you oh, name shit. this this super group? This super team. <laughs> um, I don't know about super group. That. It's not, <laughs> it's, not a, it's not a super no, group. No, is this not Voltron? No, is this no, not the Power is, Rangers? This is definitely <laughs> one of those booty ass groups. This is definitely a Mighty Morphe Power Rangers or Voltron at best. Come on now. Come on. Come on. Yeah, Come on. Yeah. Come on. You're right. at, at least at least a little Taka truck team <laughs> or something. Like the little them little go bots that be like, Come on, this is definitely a team. It's not the best team. The yeah. team. <laughs> you know how Teenage Mutant and Ninja Turtles yeah, had like yeah, four yeah. frog cousins that you never seen. It was only like in two episodes. That that's what we saw. That was this group. <laughs> that was this group. Yep. But I would like yep. to give them a name. Uh, wait, I had a name, but um, I was listening to KT. Uh-huh. Uh, what is the name that I have for these guys? Yo, it was a, it was a decent name just now, yo. Oh, oh, here we go. Uh, do do edition. <laughs> And I think that's the winner right there. That's it. That is the winner. The doo doo edition. <laughs> oh man. If I could really sing, why does it sound so bad? If I could really sing, why does it sound so bad? <laughs> that's the same. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, they should have got ABC to come out there. If they're going to have all this trash, then just go ahead and give me another yeah. creation and give me Aisha. Aisha, Aisha, so glad to meet you. I'd have been this motherfucker. Happy At is the heaven. playground, you know? What? Playground. playground. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and next motherfucker is Ray J. I fucked up my back right there. <laughs> But I right, look, y'all. Let, let's let's just go ahead and jump right. In. Like we, we're going to keep this going because for whatever reason, the rigidity of the world continues on. So let's play our favorite game. Let's play Dopa Doodoo. And listen, I read this story, and I just couldn't do anything but shake my head. And I, I don't I don't feel bad for anyone in this situation. And we'll tell you why in a second. So here's how I will present this scenario to you. A little hypothetical for the listeners out there. Consider your job, where you work at right now. Let's say that hypothetically, you've been working at this job for 27 years. You have never missed it, that you have perfect attendance at your job that you've worked at for 27 years. So your company decides to celebrate you, to give you a a token, a good gesture to show their appreciation of your work in perfect attendance for 27 years and they give you a goodie bag but not just any goodie bag you open up this bag and they stand there in front of you with big smiles on their faces at least you would think so because they're probably wearing masks or whatever the case may be but if they're not they're smiling at least the eyebrows are raised right so you know they're kind of smiling you say thank you so much check out and see what we got for you you open up this bag and then you see you get a Reese's candy bag a little party pack you get a starbucks cup with a straw 
you reach in there and you dig out two ink pens. You dig in there a little bit more and you see two individual lifesaver, the candy rolls, you know, the kind they pass around in church that you hope the usher don't see because they come in without that white glove, put it in, you know, and they take it from you. But then they say, wait, there's more. Keep, keep going. Keep going. You reach in there and you find two, not one, but two keychains and one lanyard. You know, the little necklace you put when you get your job for your badge and stuff like that. And then you pull all this stuff out and they say, thank you so much for working 27 years with us. We just wanted to show you how much we appreciate you. And that's all they got you. So, KT, I will ask you, do you think, well, in context, do <laughs> fucking do, do, do addition, do fucking do. <laughs> so, do so for, do. for context, okay. for those who's wondering, what is this coming from? There was a employee that worked at Burger King for 27 years. Nas, what what was the guy's name? His, Kevin Ford is his name. He worked at Burger King for 27 years. Did not miss a day of work for 27 years. And that's how they showed their appreciation and their gratitude by giving him this goodie bag from the convenience store. So, KT, are you sure this is doo doo? Because do you not see the sacrifice? Yes, it's do fucking do. Oh, no. Because how the hell you going to give me, you giving me pens like I'm, a, I'm in school or some shit? <laughs> like I need supplies? You giving me candy like I'm some kid? I mean, but, but it's Reese's though and Lifesavers. Do you know how good those things are? Fuck the damn Reese's. <laughs> I got, I'm a grown ass person with grown ass bills. Okay. Uh, no, we not doing uh, this. This is how you show my appreciation, your appreciation of me working your damn job, going home, smelling like French fries every goddamn night. Uh, well, it, 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 French fries, old grease. I mean, well, if, if you did a really good job, you probably went home smelling like, like the curly fries, you know? So, you know, that, that that's an upgrade, right? At least the curly fries. Not regular fries? No? That's not good enough? Do they have curly fries at Burger King? Uh, maybe. Okay, onion rings? I don't know. Something. <laughs> you, can, you, can get, you can get two bottom buns at Burger yes. King. Yes. <laughs> you, oh, you get to choose. God, you, when when you take your, your goodie bag home, you can choose. So, you know, either two top buns or two bottom buns. What no, you want? No, 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 no. <laughs> because I've been smelling that shit for 27 fucking years i don't want it don't want it hey hey that's not nice i don't want it that's because we talk about two bottom buns don't we talking about what's how the shit we're gonna be smelling that is that is disrespectful <laughs> you just can't be talking like that exactly come on now i can't see i can't i can't <laughs> Nas, what's up man like I, I don't know i don't understand why, why kt is not appreciative of what this company did for for, for them like isn't this right. great so we know this is we know this is but this is Does bullshit. He even have benefits? Right? This is more than doo doo. This is this is horse shit. This is <laughs> bullshit. This is this is shit. All right. This is the world just shitting on a young man who decided, you know what? This is the only job for me. Twenty seven years in the back of Burger King, yo. First of all, this man, man has no. He has no woman. He has no woman. No. Because a woman would have had. A woman would have told him at least year nine. Hey, you ever thought about getting a, being a manager or something? You've been working here for nine years, motherfucker. Year nine? Uh-huh. It hey, would have been before year nine, funny. honey. I'm, just, I'm trying to I'm trying to give this man some type of credit over here. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just let's just ride with the joke for a second. <laughs> well, of course, of course, month seven would have been the time for me personally. Right. But I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, remember that episode where Martin Martin had to get new jobs because he was done with uh what's uh, up radio? Yep. And she was like, you just quit in two months. Like, I thought it was going to bump me up the manager right. already. Like, the, the buffing boss. Buffing boss. <laughs> <laughs> <Yo>, <laughs> Kevin Ford, yo, listen, yo, listen, listen, my man, as I'm not even an economic uh, ex expert, obviously, right? I can't even talk that well. <laughs> Here's my thing. <laughs> Dude, I'm pretty sure that your six month of unemployment will look great. It might look like the coronavirus package that had motherfuckers not wanting to work for six months. Work? Right. <laughs> With this 1400 I'm just getting for no reason, please. Yo, my man, like, yo, go ahead and file for unemployment. Yo, pee in the fry fryer, 
shit on the grill. Get the fuck up out of there, yo. Yes. Yo, that's, yeah, doo-doo. Sorry, doo-doo. Do your best McDonald's impression and break the ice cream machine. Tear it down. Tear it all Are you the gonna, way down. You want to say good news, uh, Dante? Are you going to say the good news it's, about the story? Know, see, see, this is... The, I'm still on the fence if this is actually good news. But you know what? You know, for the sake of journalistic integrity, I will. So, <laughs> so now the the I wasn't trying to go with you. Don't be like No, 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 no. It's, it's it's all good. It's all good. But like I'm, I'm gonna have to say this while I'm grinding and gritting my teeth. Cause I'm like, there is no way. But Kevin Ford had a turn of events after this thing went on the internet because they recorded this. And he was pulling this stuff out and he was like, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. I love it. I love it all. You know, of course, there was an internet outrage because it's like, yo, this is some bullshit right here. So someone opened a GoFundMe account for this guy and they raised over $250,000 for Kevin Ford and said, this is your real gift. So for 27 years, the company you work for, imagine you work for a company for 27 years and they give you this dollar general, family dollar, great value, whatever. One of them stores, me, me and Nas came up with a business idea that we're going to open our own dollar store. We're going to call it Lot of Dollars. So we got a dollar. <laughs> we gonna you you went yeah. to lot you went to lot of dollars and got a whole bunch of random goodie bags so that you would get for an elementary school kid for passing this EOG test. And then we yeah. like and, and and dude on the outside saw this. We're like, nah, this is some bullshit right here. Let me go open up some uh a GoFundMe and we and raise two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's more than he's made over the entire course of twenty seven years of working at Burger King. That is doo doo. That is doo doo. I think that is doo doo. There is no way, no way, because he was so grateful for them lifesavers and for them ink pens and for them keychains. Oh, I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. I don't know if there's some sort of spiritual lesson in that, but I think that's doo doo too. This is doo doo, baby. Okay, I'm hating. I'm done hating. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm Ray J. You know what I'm saying? And I've been in the music game for 27 years. Perfect attendance. You know what I mean? And um, I'm trying to raise the gold for me. You know what I mean to get my uh get my vocals up. Wish I had some lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> some green tea with, with honey. Wish I had some lemonade tea. <laughs> Forgive me, y'all. My son, my son want me to have some tea. Give me oh, a second. Man. <laughs> That is, but yeah, man, that that's just one of the wildest stories we've seen. And for, for this for this next one, and I honestly I try to not even talk about this person, honestly, because people have suggested that I'm hating. And for and I'll admit, un poquito. That's that Spanish for for a little bit. Hey, talk to me nice. Talk to me nice. Hey. Que paso? All right, a little bit. <laughs> I'm, I'm hating a little bit, but I think it is absolutely 100% warranted. Now, I'm not going overboard with it, but in this particular instance, we have to talk about Shikari Richardson again. So I made the comment a few pods ago when last we talked about it. I was like, you know what? She she is more of a internet social media presence than an actual athlete because whenever she actually competes, she loses. So this is what happened that has Shikari back in the headlines. So Shikari, she, she lost again. I don't even know how to say it. I don't even know how to word it right. She lost again. And in this time, she lost pretty big because, you know, last week after her, her latest race, she finished like fifth. So she and actually she placed 10th in the semifinals of the women's 200 to qualify for the 2022 U.S. Track and Field Championships in Oregon. She failed to qualify. And because she failed to qualify, it also knocked her out of contention to represent Team USA in the World Championships that's going down next month in July. So the disappointing finish in the semis come days after she ranked 23rd out of 31 competitors in the 100 meter event and failed to advance to the semis in that event as well. Now, she avoided the media. You know, when she won uh, one of the races, I think she came in second. Oh, she stopped and, you know, she, oh, I got this to say, got the set to say, just make sure you get my good side. Let me flip my hair around. 
make sure you get my nails because you know that you know that thing your girls do y'all do that little thing like i don't know if you splash splashing water on me or something but you know she was doing that too and uh but when she lost when she lost no don't don't do that kt i love you i love you but you know it's true girl you know it's true and uh so when she lost <laughs> when she lost she she zoomed and ducked the media so of course she lost again and she got knocked out of any contention of competing in any of the big upcoming tournaments. So instead of taking accountability and saying, you know what, I got to get better. She blamed the media. She said it was the media's fault. Y'all need to respect us better. That's what she said. So I'm going to play this little clip to where she got in front of the media, got in front of the cameras and said, yo, I got something to say. And I just want y'all to know if y'all feel that she's right. If she, if she has a point, or is it that bullshit? Thanks for coming. Mm -hmm, no problem. Let's talk about the weekend as a whole. No, I have what I have to say. Y'all can all take this interview and do whatever you want to do with it. I'm coming to speak not on just my behalf, but all athletes' behalf. That when you guys do interviews, y'all should respect athletes more. Y'all should understand them coming from whether they're winning, whether they're losing, whatever the case may be. Athletes deserve way more respect than when y'all just come and throw cameras into their faces. Understand how an athlete operates and then ask your questions. Then be more understanding of the fact that they are still human, no matter just of the fact that y'all just trying to get something to put out in an article to make a dollar. Thank you. All right, so yeah, guys, I I'll, I'll start with you. I'm sorry, no, no, I felt bad uh, that I rolled my eyes. I wanted to like, I keep forgetting this is not an audio show. You know what I'm saying? Because if uh -huh. it's an audio show, you wouldn't know all that. Like I'm over here just chilling, and listening. To like, this, what the is she talking about? I, I'm sorry, Shakari. I, I love you, but I'm just, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, then I rolled my eyes. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? We over here talking about male ratchet holiness and shit. Is that is this is this, is this filter making my tongue green? I'm just okay. <laughs> nah, nah, man. So, so tell me, because I know you, you, you keep me accountable. You be like, hey, man, you, you, you doing that bullshit right now? So I'm actually keeping me account. If am I hating on Shikari when I be like, nah, this whole little fiasco here where she felt the need to speak on behalf of all athletes. Is this dope that she decided to stand up on behalf of the athletes? Or is this some doo-doo? Do you remember my half-Asian, half-black queen, Naomi Osaka? Uh-huh. And when she left the tennis game, and and everybody, of course, because it's social media, so all the black Americans was like, we on your side, Naomi. Fuck tennis. Fuck them. You the big star, which is true. Like, for right now, she is the star of tennis in that time, in that, in that moment during Wimbledon. She was yeah. a big, big star. I mean, she's a big star still, but at the same time, you know what's going on in life in sports when you're not winning, right. then you know. So with all that being said, here's my thing. Here's my thing. It's funny, and I'm saying this respectfully, and not because they female athletes. I'm talking about athletes across the board because I think the Generation Z era, in, in, including Simone Blouse, who I love, like she's a great gymnast, but... When you start telling the media, telling social media, people that can't help you with your quote unquote mental health, mental illnesses that will not allow you to perform anymore. You need to go talk to people that are experienced in those fields to help yourself out because to the normal everyday person that sees that you got to realize and it's not a hate thing on a money level. It's just that. You're getting paid thousands or millions or being sponsored thousands or millions to perform something that we would love to do as children all over again, but you do it as adults. So let's get back into Shikari, the bigger picture, as far as what she's going on right now as a, as a sports athlete. She's not winning right now, and I don't want to be the person to be like, yo, yeah, see, look, now you over here in all this business, that's why you ain't winning. Nah, she's a top-tier athlete. I'm pretty sure whether uh, she's clout-chasing <laughs> or she's not clout chasing she's she's still training every day you know what i mean she's still working hard every day um i think this is just a time to to realize like yo she just has a lot to work on and her look made of course all of us as black americans lean into her like damn who is this new version of jack of journey uh jack of journey cursey uh or i mean not jack of journey of uh, flojo i meant to say my Jorn apologies okay 
I wasn't talking about her though. I apologize. I was speaking too fast and I meant to say Flojo, the one with the nails like you love. I'm sorry. My apologies. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Jackie Jerna would be more of like the Patti LaBelle, Gladys Knight style of the of the running. She ain't had the nails. She was like, nah, I slick back and I'm out here. You know what I'm saying? But Flojo was Flojo was fly as hell. And Shikari is she she does her city girl rendition. Like she got lace sleeves now while she running. Like, yo, like. Yeah. I, yo, I get down with her. I love the fact that she's looking to make track different, but you can't have that attitude about what the media is doing and shifting an agenda when you're losing. Whatever they want to put out uh, as far as on a journalistic way, hopefully it's true, but you know, we live in a time of public opinion, so everybody gets to write their right. opinion instead of the facts. But if you want them to go to the facts, do you want them to tell you like, hey, fact is, while you was out here quote unquote clout chasing, you've been losing a lot. You want that to be said too? What you want? Um, I think that she needs to learn when to speak and when not to. Because you talk a lot of trash for somebody who is not backing it up. Okay. So I feel like I'm, I'm rooting for, I wanted to win, but sometimes you do more damage to your own rep when you talk too damn much. So I yeah, feel like, okay. Hey, Put in your work. Do what you need to do. And then let your work speak for you. You don't have to be all up in the cameras, all this talking and all that stuff. Regroup. Work on it. Come back. Do what you got to do. And then you ain't got to talk, honey. Your, your, your skills... You know, you're winning. All of that's going to speak for you. You don't have to do all that. You don't have to be so extra. You don't. You don't have to. And I, I was just, holding you know, a little chat. I'm, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, KT. I, I thought no, you was done. I, I was going right into the joke. You know what I'm saying? Shikari just go ahead. passed the finish line. 10 plates on. So I'm sorry, y'all. You know what I'm saying? I had my kid holding my kid the whole time <laughs> while I was running. You know what I mean? You know, I used to get in first place all the time. But, um, you know. Let me put my son down. Give me a second, y'all. Let's put my son down. <laughs> wish I got wish I got some sponsorship by Nike. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, I, <laughs> wish I had some stronger legs. Wish I could <laughs> wish I was Jamaican. <laughs> wish, I, <laughs> I wish I was Jamaican. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> she making girlfriend. Oh, She's making man. next girlfriend. Now, nah, me, now, nah, me, now. Nah. She should have been training with me, now, nah, me, girl. You know what I'm saying? She getting all mad for like, that so one time. I just told her, said, listen, you can't be hitting, you can't be hitting the blocks off like that. You got to move a little faster, the little body, little body girl, little bomba, bomba. Hold up, I got a veggie party girl. So you can play with little Yankee, little Yankee Southern girl. Oh, God damn. <laughs> Oh man, but yeah, that, that's just how I feel about it. Cause I, I I'll say it again. Like I, I'm rooting for Shikari. I really am. I really am rooting for. Her. But I feel like one, she she she's us. You know, she 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 is the full embodiment of our culture. Absolutely. So I'm not mad at her being outspoken. I'm not mad at her speaking her mind, being who she is. I have absolutely no problem. But if you are of the culture, you know how we operate. Is one, if you talk a big game and you don't back it up, we gonna talk about it. Like we gonna roast you. We can love you to the to the next universe, but we gonna get these jokes off. But we want you to win. When when you win, trust we will be front and center, singing your praises. And and parading you around our culture because you are from us, absolutely. But until then, you've been getting your ass whooped. So that's just what it is. That's just what it is, man. But man, 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 yeah. Like you, you got this. We believe in you. We we want you to win. But until then, we got some jokes. That's all. We got some Didn't jokes. Charles Barkley say something that's like that when we talk about uh, Marquez Fultz um, on, on NBA, uh, on Inside the NBA? He was like, sitting yeah. there with drawers on, tapping up on your keyboard. 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Just shut the fuck up. We pull it for shit. That's what he said. <laughs> That's that's what he said. That is what he He's said. With, with a little keyboard watching the world pass you by. You thirty two at your grandmama's basement. All that he was. Oh, he was, man. that was yeah. funny, yeah. Charles Barkley is hilarious, man. <laughs> Charles Barkley is hilarious. Oh, so that is that. That wraps up around a dope doodle. So I want to ask a a, a little. Um, I don't want to say it's personal. Or anything, but you know, th- there's just you know something. I, well, I'll start like this. Florida is different, man. Florida is different. What I want us to do, and I- I'll say on the the next episode, I want us to do this little exercise that people do when it comes to Florida is putting your 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 birthday and put you know like my birthday December seventeenth. So just put December seventeenth in Florida and see what news headline. <laughs> pops up on that day. And mm. the thing is, the game is that no matter what day you put in on your birthday, something crazy happened in Florida. Yes. So <laughs> we'll we'll put a pin in that. So put in your birthday in Florida and see what crazy headline comes up. But I say all to say this because, you know, I don't consider Florida the South. It's, it's, it's a different world. Yes, it's it a is. different world. Ooh. Wish I had a better okay. <laughs> so <laughs> so here's what here's what's going on. And I know for you grown and sexy types, y'all know where I'm coming from. So, okay, there's a particular couple, man and a woman. You know, the guy's driving, the girls in the passenger seat, you know, they feeling a little freaky. So, you know, she decide to, you know, dry the stick shift while he's driving, if you know what I'm saying. So apparently, you know, he the guy couldn't take it. You know, he got to rolling his head and rolling his eyes and stuff. He couldn't focus, you know, and then so much. So, you know, he, he got apparently too ahead of himself, no pun intended, and it's caused a head on collision to the FedEx truck. And, you know, he got a, a bunch of injuries and, you know, injuries to, to his member there. Cause of course, cause that's what was happening. And, you know, I, I, I just, I just want y'all, my question is as crazy as this is, you know, I'm going to dig in your business a little bit. Question one, have you had that experience of, you know, sloppy top in the car while, while we're driving, while the vehicle is in a forward motion or backwards motion, depending on how you get down. Uh, Let's start there. So KT, have you ever implemented your Jill Scott skills to your significant other while he was? Hey, what is this Jill Scott driving? line you keep dropping about this? Yo, what, am I missing a joke here? I think you are. I think you are because there was a Jill Scott performance. You didn't see that? Where she, she had the mic imitated fellatio to the microphone. Yeah, you never this, seen that? Oh, this, this wasn't oh, oh, like any Tom Perry movie that I should be watching. No, no, no. no. You don't gotta pull oh, that up. It's okay. Just, send, just send me that. I'm gonna I'm send, send it to you. I'm gonna send. I'm a, send it, yeah, I'm gonna send it. Should also play that on Pop Avengers, Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's, absolutely. That's okay. I actually, I'm gonna mm-hmm. write it. I'm gonna write that down right now. Just, yeah, right. because yeah, we 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 got it. Jill, to yeah, answer Jill Scott. Your question, sir. No, I have not, because I know that it would get like homeboy who was driving that car, and I value my life. Okay. I oh, value okay. my life. And I value his member. I wouldn't want it to get hurt. So we're going to do oh, that in when the car is parked or in the safety of our own home. Okay? Yeah, not doing hey, that while hey, the car hey, is Hold on, KT. Okay. You, I know you ain't holding on to no man dick with them fucking uh, animal claws you got going on right now. I'd be like, back up! <laughs> you ain't touching me with them things. You ain't going to scratch me up. First of Stop all, playing. first of all, <laughs> first of all, I know how to function with these okay i trust trust ain't no harm gonna be done with these nails okay so so what so what you're saying kt is i ain't, I ain't new to this i'm true to this that's what you're saying no, is she's that saying, what you're saying with tooth to this ain't... get out of here oh. <laughs> 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 oh man so <laughs> this is my thought and i just wanted to see if you know vibe check here I thought this was kind of corny, you know, and that was funny, you know, cause I, I feel like one, 
you know, the dude, I'm like, huh, sucker, you can't even take that. You probably never had it like that. You, oh, 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 you can't even focus. But either way, either way, I feel like it's corny because I feel like Carhead <laughs> is overrated. That's all. I feel like it's a little overrated because, you know, it's just not, it just doesn't work for me in my Jamie Foxx voice. It just doesn't work. Never quite. Like I, so I just, I don't, I don't know. It just seems a little overrated for me. Okay. Well, of course, let me uh, start by making you laugh first. Of course, uh, I want to quote the famous uh, poets, Heat Wave. Uh, I believe they said, mind blowing decisions. Causes head on collisions. All right. True. Truth. All right. That is true. Truth. All right. That is the truth. Our very right. own Jeremiah. Right. <laughs> 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 he is looking looking for a reason to grab yeah, that baby now. Right? Don't I'm give sorry. me I'm sorry. my I'm give sorry. me I only I only sing classic songs from the seventies. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm give my kid now. Here's my thing for I real. I wish you had auto Dante. Uh, car, car head is overrated. Only because, again, in porn, I really, you know, I look, I'm going to be honest. You know, I, I'm not like, you know, like, like, you know, I don't think I would get a porn certificate. You know what I'm saying? Women be like, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, listen, porn, people that live in porn, I feel like they they may not live a better life because it's very obscure, but they have a good time. They, they must. They, it, it, it has to be because... They make everything look good sexually. When I try to get head from a woman, like in a car in real life, that was the most, like, it was just too much. The woman head too heady. I'm trying to, you know, all right, well, let me, on the top. You know how you got the hands on 10 and 2? My hands was on 12. It just, but yeah, that's just how I feel, man. It's, it's so, it's so awkward. It's just like the awkward positions. And then don't let there be a lot of traffic. You know, like, if it's just a lot of traffic. And you just got a lot of you got you got a lot going on, and so you, that might work. No, yeah, because it's, it's slower because, down. If you was in gridlock, oh, imagine getting head in California gridlock. That is perfect. Oh God, that That's that makes sense. I, I I I mean I mean so much so as far as like you know a lot of cars in and out of lanes, stopping, starting to where you know it's it's not a good flow. It's not necessarily slow. But you got to be paying attention because, you know, people drive stupid. So, you know, I don't want to have to stop on brakes suddenly and then like you in the process of going down. And so you going forward, do the momentum of me breaking and then teeth, Ooh. you know, and or something. You, you know, so it's like uh, this is you why know, rich I'm, have drivers. You, know what I'm, you get the woman be, in the back seat and you do what you got to do. Ex- but at the same time, right. I want to I want to be, uh, right. you know, I want to be non-binary. And I want to. Um, <laughs> I want to just say to all the women that I we apologize here at Talk My Credo because women, you don't really get to be a part of this type of conversation as far as car ahead. Because listen, you ain't going. I wish a woman would ask me to give you some head while you driving. You know what I'm saying? First of all, it's gonna be hard to even get down yeah. there, and then second of all, we all know women can't drive. <laughs> so you want me to add yet another distraction on your plate? Okay. Oh, you want me to die? And I, I feel like if that is the case, if that is the case, that's my heart that they're flying over to that hospital, that they crash in a helicopter, that the doctor trip and kick across the, the roof of the other <laughs> hospital. That's my heart that's being kicked around because I done tried something crazy and then died. And I'm over here singing, wish I had my heart back. Wish I didn't do that shit. Yeah, the was cool. the head wasn't cool. worth it. <laughs> All right, so of course another major thing that has happened, and we'll try to we'll, you know try to get a little bit introspective up in here, you know. Roe v. Wade was overturned, so I know everyone has drew their line in the sand. Everyone is e- either they are celebrating it or they are vehemently against it, and they are you know doing everything they can from protests to social media posts to twerk fest all this type of stuff like everything is happening to show either support whoa, 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 or just i'm sorry i'm sorry Roe captain i'm sorry captain there are uh-huh. women doing twerk offs in support of pro choice yep. when and where and why yep. haven't we flew out there uh-huh this this is see mm. the, the the issue is you know i'm 
I'm married, man. So, you know, I got to ask different types of questions to get but, into but, those types of things. We just want to interview them. No, so, no, this but, is for media purposes. For content exactly. purpose, for journalistic exactly. purposes. You're right. And, and then, See, I was now, looking I'm for going that. to be there yes. so you can just live vicariously through my penis because I'm the single one. <laughs> gotcha. You know what? Absolutely right. Absolutely right. Yes. You had a <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> oh, forgive me. Now. I'm single. Forgive me. Put my son down because I'm single. Okay. We're going to take a different perspective. At least I am. You know, I'll, I'll let you guys get whatever you want to say uh, about this whole situation. But I was looking at it like this. I was looking at it like, you know, is is this whole Roe v. Wade being overturned in this time? Is it really about right to life or is it about white to life? And this is what right I mean. to life. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard about. Yeah. You know, right to life or white to life. And I, I say that because white to life, honey. you know, for sorry, Go ahead. So ever since ever since. 1973 when it was first passed and even the inception of it being passed and created is some racist bullshit but I go off on that a different in, in a little bit I feel like that the way that these pro life stances are being celebrated or presented you know it's one hypocritical to me and I, I promise I can go off for a long time about about these things, but for the sake of time, I'll just say I find it hypocritical because I feel like there is always something a bit more sinister. And the more sinister thing that I, I believe is, is because that right now there is a theory, if you will, we'll just call it a theory because that's what they call it called the great replacement theory. I know y'all remember, we talked about this quite a few pods ago. Um, regarding the Buffalo shooting and part of the reason why he wanted to, you know, do what he did because he felt that the white race was being, you know, filtered out. And if they didn't do anything about it, the white race would be extinct in X amount of years. And that's what, honestly, I believe this is a, uh, a big motivator. I believe it's more real than people want to admit. I believe that there are, a lot of people that are in Congress who thinks and believe this way. And I think it is a more prevalent belief and thought to where it is. It was done out of survival because as they know in the last, you know, I believe decade or so, I don't have the numbers right in front of me, but like in the last decade, as far as birth rates among the, uh, among white people has plummeted and it continues to plummet. And they wanted to do something about that, even though as far as the black community, we still got a, a, a vice-like grip on that top spot when it comes to those who proceed as far as the pro-choice type thing. But I'll end all that to say this, that I think that with the Roe v. Wade, regardless of what side of the fence you, you, you are on, I think as a black person, I think we have to look at this a little bit differently than pro-choice or pro-life because I, I like, I, I don't try to look at the symptom. If you will, I feel like this is a symptom. I try to go to the root. How was this started? What started all of this to where, what happened in 1973 to what happened now with 2022, what started all this and the inception, the seed that started all this wasn't really in favor for black people. It was actually meant to actually try to kill us off. But I'll just say this. I think it's more white motivated as far as getting a boost in population and stopping or making abortions illegal or making it harder to get an abortion. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. So if that made any sense, you guys can react, give your takes, and then we'll progress it a little further. What do you guys think? Well, um, I know I've said it before that um, Roe v. Wade is only a open a door to open them up to being able to overturn some other shit. I think this is just the beginning uh -huh. because look at what they did right along with doing the whole Roe v. Wade thing. Police can't be sued for not reading you your rights. 
Um, they expanded gun rights to carry with no permit. Um, states are required to fund private religious schools. All of this in one damn week, they did. All of that. So I'm telling you, Roe v. Wade is not the end-all, be-all. It's a doorway to fuck some other shit up. Okay, so I think we talked about a little bit of this on on you know TLNF on the late night flight. I'm gonna just uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say one thing that I, I think I said on the late night flight, but I want to make sure I say it again because this is the most important thing of whatever I'm going to say. Control the law, you control the punishment. You control the punishment, you control the people. Control the people, you will control the vote. Of course, white America understands that. They built the Constitution. They know better. Um, they have these articles out saying that the Hispanic community could be the largest population in about 40 years, in 2040. Well, that's not 40, it's about 20 years. But let's say 20, 2050, right? The, this, is, this is documented as far as articles are saying this prediction. So you can go ahead and look this up on Google if you like. Now, here's the thing. It's... All those Midwest states. First of all, every state had more white people than black people or Hispanic people, period. Every state, except for Hawaii, all right, with the Polynesians. But the thing is this. The thing is this. If I can turn this 87% in Iowa or Wisconsin or Indiana and make it 94, hey, let's do it. Let's make sure we cement our legacy, our dominance, because America's greatest resource is the population. Whoever runs, whoever is the most populated, you'll be able to vote for whoever you want to vote for. That's the name of the game. That's why Barack, Barack Obama, who I love, is a unicorn, not the first black, because they're not going to try to get a second black in here no time soon. They're trying right now by getting Trump out of here with these Senate hearings, I mean, with these January, January 6th hearings. And I have to be honest, I don't, I don't know if it's looking too good right now. They got White House Trump aides Speaking against Trump, like, yo, I heard him say some wild shit in the office that day. Yo, I don't, <laughs> listen. So they're, the Congress is doing what they can to see if Trump can't even run. So maybe that will open the door for a woman to become our first president. And hopefully that, uh, that won't be just a unicorn as well. That can be a continuous thing. It can be the Hispanic. It can be Asian. It can be black man, black woman, all that good stuff. Um, but I want to say one more thing about this. White people, um, you got to realize, yo, that you are honestly, you're the, you're the antibiotic of the racism. If the white people that say black people are the coolest motherfuckers we ever seen in our life, the Hispanics are great, da, 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 you got to act like it. You got to question these white motherfuckers that is just so, I don't, it's not even about being conservative. It's just being racist, just being just full on we don't like the fact that the black man or the black woman is taking up all our air, taking our jobs. It's like, how are we taking up all your jobs? It's only 15% of us in this fucking country. Like, what are you talking about? You know what I'm saying? It ain't enough of us, all right? And then as far as the abortion, look, I'm going to just say this. I'm going to just say this because I, I think it's more of a, well, first of all, it's a woman's issue. We know that. This is, about, this is about a woman and her reproductive organ has nothing to do with me. Now, with that being said, However women want to use that, whether it's for lustful reasons or for procreation reasons, ain't in our business. The, the thing is this. Like, <laughs> if you want to run the country, and I'm just talking to black people, and I'm not even coming at you, I'm being real. Like, if you want to play the game, like Nas said, we need more warriors soon. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, it ain't about being quote unquote pro choice or pro life. It's about if you want a black president, however they look, male, female, transsexual, don't matter. If you want that person to be in, overpopulate the country. While we have it, while it's legal to do it, no one can get mad at you. I mean, when you think about, hey, here's the here's the, uh, the 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 test you can have for white people. When you have two new kids in the last two years, and you start showing pictures to white people, and they just like really happy. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I, right. you know what I mean? Because, listen, right now, no disrespect, some maggots see you with some new kids, they might be mad as fuck over here talking to Ivanka, like, hey, yo, Ivanka, who told you, hey, you better go ahead and make another child. We ain't playing. I ain't power in here. I'm sorry, that's it. Uh, but, but but that's the truth. And here's why I believe, especially, I'm I'm glad you, you mentioned that, you know, it's, it ain't even about conservative, because it's it's honestly 
from both sides. That's why it's like, I think for black people, we have to have a different perspective and a deeper look into instead of just saying, well, I'm pro-life or pro-choice. What, and for whatever reason, you may be pro-life or, or pro-choice. As a black person, you have to have a deeper meaning because you're standing with people who ultimately do not like you. That they may agree with you on a, on on an issue on the surface. I'm now, pro life. Now, or I'm pro choice. Now, now, they you don't like you. And you don't give like, shit you about like your just, life. You sound like cousin Smarts in that way because he talks about that with with, with happened with COVID, where yeah. uh, there was a lot of black black Americans up here in New York protesting with doctors and things that nature about the about not uh, not being vaccinated. And it's like yo, these white people don't even care about yeah. you either way, though. You know what I'm saying? What are you doing? But but what I would say to that is right. In a sense, you got to think about it like this, because I, I don't think no one's wrong with what you're saying is, but that's what America is supposed to be. Like, we're supposed to show some type of diverse unity over one thing. We can all beef together about Roe v. Wade because we all True. know for the most part it sounds stupid. To overturn it, it just doesn't. It, like, right. what was this for? Because think about this. I don't know if this was happening on your Facebook time, but I know what happened on my, on my timeline people really started to talk about the overturning of it. Like really I'm pro-life or I'm pro-choice. And I'm just like, yeah. what? Like I get it. Like, I get it. But at the same time, I don't see the deeper and rap part about yeah. it, but that yeah. is the American way as far as, okay, this is an issue. This is the, this is the podcast topic. Let's have a talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Just like with the kid, with the, the man right. and the woman that they had that little skit about the, the kids eating the food, whatever the McDonald's food. It's like, yo, it's a uh -huh. moment that we can all come together and just talk shit about the moment. But the problem with that is, is never the extra step. Right. Kaepernick, Kaepernick is perfect. Let me tell you something right now, yo, because I look, I'm going to just say this to so white people who look yep. right in this camera. White people, I don't have no issue with you. Uh -huh. Like, I, like, as far as individually, I have never ran into no real racism, group wise, maybe. Yeah. But individually, not really. I'll be honest. But, yo, here's the issue. Any white person that tells me, like, yo, the first thing they want to say, oh, whatever Kaepernick did was disrespectful and da-da-da, that's my, that's my feelings on it and that's it, I can't fuck with you. Sorry, can't even fuck with you. I can't listen to you. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I'm not even going to be one of them people that I understand and I respect your decision. No, nigga, you ain't my friend. You ain't going to the cookout at all. What do you mean yeah. Kaepernick did this? And that? For, like, it's the nope. rhetoric. You know what I mean? Like it's the rhetoric for uh. Well, I hate to be hood about it. It's the rhetoric for yep. me, but it is the rhetoric though. Is is how they present their issues, white people, and how they want us to empathize with it. And it's yep. hard to do that when we've been held down for so much, so long. Oh, you want to repopulate the country? Well, let's say yep. we want to too. You know what they'll do? They'll take our health care away. They'll do some bullshit. With they'll make restrictions on welfare. They'll find yep. some crap. That, that make the low-income black people even lower, the high-income black people to either be low-income like the rest of the homies or be just as totalitarian as the whites and don't even look at your color anymore. And they've done that to a few. I mean, Bob's Cartel, Sammy Sosa, Little Kim. I mean, I'm just saying, everybody yep. turning light skin out here. Light Man, bright. Little Kim and built like I robot right now. I'm sorry. That was a side... Oh, not built like I'm sorry, <laughs> y'all. <laughs> but he, here's here's what what I will say, because I want to, um, I guess just reiterate that these these theories, it, what exactly what Nas was talking about, it, it's it's more prevalent than people would believe. Like I talk about it all the time. Now, um, I've had, you know, of course, direct. Uh, encounters with uh, with racist people and racist encounters and stuff like that. I'm in North Carolina. I'm in the South, and, and North Carolina is red, red. Now it's it's getting a little murky, you know. It's, it's getting a little brownish or whatever, but it's it's still very much red. Especially when you know uh, fear mongering is a very strong motivator, especially when you're dealing with Pete those on the right. Um, but a a guy I went to school with, white guy. Um really was sucking in school, just did not make good grades and all this type of stuff. Just, just a real, you know, not a, a, a good student. I put it that way. Not, not a studious student, but for the most part, it was cool. We played ball and this, that, and the third. And every now and then we may hang out in, in some places, but wouldn't necessarily call him a friend. 
But, you know, time goes on. We grow up in this, that, and the third. These issues are coming up. Uh, Obama's president. So now I'm seeing a lot more opinions by him that seem very racist. So I'm like, all right, let's 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 have some some conversations. And, you know, they always come to you as on the, the unity, we're all one, you know, the all very all lives matter type of thing, that type of tip. You know, you're my brother. We did this. We did that. We did that. But I'm like, well, let's dig a little deeper because I want to understand we grew up in the same city, but why are our perspectives so different? And it's like, and it's clear that you don't really understand where we come from. Because like, well, how can you say there's racism? We went to the same school together. We played basketball together. Yes, we did. But um, still, the things that happen to you, what you experience is very different from the things I experienced. Well, you know, I don't have white privilege. Or I grew up in a trailer park. So where's my white privilege? How can I cash it in? No, that's not what we're talking about. Because there is a stark history that you don't know. We have to know your history better than you do just so we can have an understanding of how to move. But I say all that to say this. One day I was like, you know what? You know, I see these criticism and these memes and all these things, and you know, just the, the early Donald Trump support posts that I see. And, and this is not even the, to insinuate that Trump himself is racist, but a lot of racist people backed him. But I was like, I just wonder, what, what is it that you did not like about Obama? And he told me, he's like, well, I felt like Obama was... Uh, secretly or trying to make America less white. And that's what he told me. That's what he told me. I don't give a fuck. His name is Chris Nanny. Shelby, North hey, Carolina. Man. Lives in like Bowling Springs. Please somewhere. let me call him. I don't care. Let me talk to him, man. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't care at all because I had a nice... I remember this. This how this went down on yep. Facebook. I remember yep. This. Yep. You do remember. Yep. You absolutely do remember because it, it was definitely a Facebook mm-hmm. thing. Um, yep. but he was like, yeah, he felt he and a friend of his um, another white guy and his friend was just blatant he was just blatant racist um, but he was trying to do that whole deceptive I like you but if I could wipe you off the planet I would that 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 type of vibe but uh, yeah he's like I believe they would make mm-hmm. Obama is making America less white and believe that whole thing he's he's secretly Muslim he's trying to take our guns he's trying to take away our rights he's trying to set up a, a military nation where he wipes out all the white like this is what he was telling me telling me and so when the buffalo shooting happened and his manifesto and he thought it listed out the the great replacement theory i'm like that's exactly what that motherfucker was talking about he expressed i didn't know what was called then but and so then um as i i'm just talking to him like this is you know look at it from this perspective this is a particular history you know nothing about that you did not have to worry about just because you are white. And that's just a thing. And so he, he came back and this is where shit hit the fan. He's like, you know what? I know you, I, I, I know what you're trying to do now. I didn't see it before, but I see it now. You're trying to change this country. You, you, you don't want the country to be as it is. You want to change it. And you know, blah, 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 going off and, and saying that, you know, me want to change the country is like a bad thing. And I'm like, well, what are you talking about so that's when shit hit the fan he and his friend goes in and that's when you start hearing stupid talking points where they'd be like oh don't talk about there's racism because if racism was was really real y'all wouldn't have a black entertainment television where where's a white entertainment television i lie to you not this is the thing that was saying to me if there's racism why do you have a black entertainment television where's a white entertainment television oh how how come you know, you, you got your rappers and your, and your basketball players. They make millions and millions of dollars while I scrape, while I struggle to scrape two nickels together. You know, that, that type of stuff. Y'all are more privileged than any of us. Look at the basketball and the NFL players. They make millions and millions of dollars. How can you say there's racism and, and systemic oppression and blah, 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 blah. That type of stuff. What about, what, what about the white quarterback that run the motherfuckers that make even more millions of dollars in them? Anyway, I don't get into that. Exactly. The white coaches. Exactly. Exactly. Really Team about? owners. What are we talking about? But that Team is owners. what are we really talking about? Now? I what promise you, about? I just sat there like, <laughs> what? And like, but the thing that that I I I remember chiming in. Right. Yeah, you jumped in on it too. And then I was like, the thing is, they actually believe this. They believe this. It's like, what about white entertainment television? I was like, you don't know who owns BET, do you? You, do you even think there would be a, B, a BET if we weren't allowed? Like, just, you know, all these little nuanced things. But, like, but they believe that black, non-white people are attempting to take over the country and wipe them out. And they have to wipe us out before, you know, 
that they have to get us before we get them. It's a more prevalent thought and theory amongst people than people would like to believe that they would like to look at it and be like, Oh, this guy in Buffalo, he was just crazy. He was just off his rocker. No, 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 no. You got your politicians. You got people in office. You got your everyday people who look at you in the face, smile at you. Hey, how you doing there, brother? And going about their business and this, that, and the third, but they think exactly like this. Exactly faith like is this. more, faith is more than just a religion is, is, is rhetoric that people want to believe in and, and, yes. and rather die with it. So when you have all these conspiracy theories and let's be honest, I, I'm not even trying to be on some political stuff, but yeah. the Republicans, but at least the last 10 years have been thriving off of conspiracy theories. Yes. The Trump, yes, they have. The whole Trump election is, is pushed by a conspiracy theory. I mean, the yep. largest theory, which I ain't even going to lie. I actually would agree with this theory is yo the politicians that we've been voting in ain't shit i'd I rather have a fucking celebrity or somebody else you know what I'm saying give me my homegirls around the corner that's a community activist i take her you know what I'm saying it's like yep when the politicians do wrong by you and it's your job to vote them in just because they're the ones that say they want to do the job why can't we just be as people and just say well you know what we ain't voting for nothing with you motherfuckers like go back to the drawing board and figure it out Exactly. We and just I, won't, I, we won't have a councilman for four years. We'll just figure it out on our own master people. You know what I'm saying? We don't want yeah. to represent, but we can't even get to that point. It's a let's be all in on America, or we just all in on our version of America. Exactly. And, yep. And when I see like when you talk about Florida, again, Cubans and other Hispanics, they did what America say that you can do. Oh. Oh, it's 50,000 of us in this little land? Well, guess what? We about to make this look like Little Havana now. How about that? How about that? Asians come to New York and L.A., they make Chinatown. How about that? No problem. This is our community. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <clears throat> excuse me, we wish we could have our own councilman and councilwoman for Chinatown if we could. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we, we locked into your melting pot city. Okay, yep. fine. Fine. Soon as some homies want to come, you know what I'm saying? All we got is Atlanta. That's all we really got. Yeah. And we can't even call it little black anything, little Nigeria, nothing. It's Atlanta, motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which to me is true. If this well, it's fine. You know what I'm saying? My thing is white people, any any type of uh, creed can come there, visit, have a good time, enjoy the experience, enjoy the black American culture. American, of course, you know what I'm saying? But it's a black American uh -huh. culture. You get to enjoy that. All right? Motherfucker, I'm from New Jersey. I can go to Cape May, New Jersey, an hour and a half away, all right, to a beach. Guess what I'm going to be experiencing? A white experience, okay? They ain't got to call uh -huh. it that. I'm going to be the only black motherfucker on the beach side. <laughs> they ain't got to say it. Yeah. They don't yeah. have to say it. Why do you want to say we don't get white uh, entertainment television? You got TBS, TNT. You got fucking 1,000 fucking channels and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The three channels we got on cable network, two of the motherfuckers don't even have real fucking uh, stuff on. You ever seen Aspire? Right. You ever seen a bounce network? Ain't shit on them mm -hmm. fucking networks. They might as well put our podcast on the fucking network. At least we yeah. got content and at least we do this shit consistently. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. They just got pictures of Amari Hardwick and fucking Magic Johnson presenting shit. Get the fuck out of here. Bullshit. Yep. Exactly. 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 There was a, an episode I know on Red Table Talk, they actually had an episode about this uh dude or just i think it was just race relations and how um people can get to the point where they are believing this rhetoric so this dude he used to be a kkk member um he's reformed now but he talked about how he even got to that point um of believing certain stuff uh how it started off real small and that, um, you know, and how they're using social media, they just drop little things here and there. Like uh, a mother was on there and was talking about how she saw just stuff start creeping up on her son's timeline on his social media. And she started seeing just little suggestive stuff, little things that you wouldn't normally pay too much attention to, but once you click on one thing, then all of a sudden other stuff starts coming on your timeline and they start bombarding 
your kids uh-huh. Steve, with Steve stuff, Bannon you know. Ray Bart comes she, out that motherfucker like, yeah, you welcome the <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just um, I apologize, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no niggas on this uh station, <laughs> y'all. You know what I'm saying? My bad. Sorry, right, so I mean th- this is such a, a deep thing, and I'll 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 probably come with a, a, a part two to this once I kind of hash out because I I want to get um I want to get more voices and perspectives on this. So I'll probably try to see if I can do like a, a, a call in session if I can get a few people interested in doing so. But um but this last one, and, and not least, because this happened today. The date of this recording is June thirtieth. It's almost the first of the month. Get up, wake get up, up, wake get up, up, wake up. R. Kelly got a thirty-piece wing dinner, extra, extra, extra spicy. R. Kelly was sentenced to thirty years in federal prison for the things that he did. So, I'm just going to open this flow up. Um, Nas is given the church finger or <laughs> the church finger or, or not, but I, I just, I just won't, is, is there a, any type of different reaction that we will have as far as, did we not see this coming? You know, that's, that's kind of, I'm like, okay, I definitely saw this coming. Like you knew whatever he was going to do, he, he was going to pay for that shit in 30 years. Remember that joke? That we used to do on OJ when he was like, yo, OJ got locked up the second time for doing the first thing, all that BS, you know what I'm saying? OJ got locked uh-huh. up. The first thing that happened, yo, I think R. Kelly is like straight up without a doubt the first person in American history that got locked up for the same thing that he they said he didn't do. Like imagine if Mike yep. and I'm not even saying I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you right now, I don't think Michael Jackson did it, but I'm just saying. The second yeah. time, it was just like, hey, yo, whoa, whoa. But he was not guilty both times, so I'm going to just leave it alone. You know what I'm saying? But R. Kelly, not guilty the first time. The second time, you're guilty. It, like, I feel bad because I, w- I wasn't one of those people that was like, yay, R. Kelly, or anything like that. I don't know. I don't, you know, I don't know man business, but I mean, when right. he told me he was making a new album, I was happy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do, do great music what you talking about? <laughs> yeah. and these and this is this is talent so i mean listen i could walk into a, a foot locker and i hear i believe i can fly and i'm like you know but we all make mistakes quick you know what i'm saying quick yeah. <laughs> but but yep. to be honest with you um i'm gonna just say this one thing because i know everybody gonna say bad things about r kelly i want to say some really really thoughtful stuff for real for real. i want to uh, hopefully, you can time me. Give me two minutes and ten seconds. Check me out. I really don't like the fact that we as Black Americans are shitting on R. Kelly. I know it's gonna sound crazy, right? But I'm only reason why I'm saying that is because yeah. on some real shit. And I was there's a lot of people that go through this pedophilia thing, and because we don't know how to solve pedophilia, because this is a mental disease. This is something that we're gonna have to start opening up brains and figure out on a neural level what's going on so we can protect the next generation so we don't birth people that have this type of uh, deformity we don't know what to do with these people so what we do is we just send them to jail r kelly who was also abused when he was a child you know what i'm saying just basically Uh turned the tables on his own life i'm not saying that we can give him um you know you got to empathize with him so hard but i'm just making a point that he too needed some help and no one needs yes. help. And listen, I don't mean to talk to the higher power and all that good stuff, but check me out. Like, God gives all of us gifts. Period. You know what I'm saying? So you can't just because yep. the man was abused when he was young and he married Aaliyah and people allowed that. So I'm not even going to get so super mad at R. Kelly. There's people around PR staff management that's yep. seen this shit and did not say, hey, 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 now. They thought it was all good. You know what I'm saying? They enabled him for a long time. And enabled him for a long yeah. time. And, you know, and uh, I don't like to, I don't want to talk about Aaliyah because Aaliyah's not here. This is the, the queen that she is. But this is where I, I'm not blaming Aaliyah. I'm just saying, for women, your twenty percent of responsibility got to be with the women too, because it's like yo, you know. And let's be honest, women like older men. Don't matter if you're sixteen looking for a twenty six year old man, or you're twenty six looking for a fifty six year old man. Women be into that shit, no matter what race. 
All right. So when I Max. the the thing is, it's like, damn, it's a two way street. Of course, Art Kelly going to get played out more. He should. He's the older one. He should know better. But obviously, mentally, he doesn't. And we don't have no way to help people to do that. Larry Nasser. All right. The guy, man, th think about this. Larry Nasser is a million dollar doctor that was working at um, Michigan State University. Was it Michigan State? Yeah, Michigan State. Yeah, Michigan State. That's the guy. He wound up. He's going to jail for the rest of his life because he was abusing the gymnat, the female gymnastics. So while they're, you know, they're checking out their their stuff, you know, their their those regions, he all up in it. And then the gymnast, they told this dude was doing this for twenty something years. When was anybody going to take this man to the side and figure what's going on with his head? Jerry Sandusky. What about him in Penn State? You over here butt naked playing around with little boys. In the in the in the in the showers in the locker room and all that stuff, Joe Paterno turns his eye because you know it's like he don't want to go through that. But at the same time, it's like yo, nobody won't pull him to like yo for twenty something years. Y'all y'all held this secret. Y'all could the first time y'all saw y'all could have just put him into a mental ward and figured out what the fuck is going on with him. I care about those things more than people just saying R. Kelly ain't shit. Jerry Sandusky ain't shit. This person ain't shit. Woody Allen ain't shit. Yes, they, yo, people, man, we walk a crazy line of righteousness and atonement. No one wants to be embarrassed. Right. That's why it's like, yo, if you're not going to help the people, you know what I'm saying? You can't just shit on them like that. But again, we're going to shit on R. Kelly. 30 years, this was a bad thing. Human trafficking shit. You got men and women over here. Like, yeah, that nigga tried to... <laughs> Use my dick for an instrument. I'm tired of them. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, and then with the but it's true. and all this stuff, it's yeah. just like, see, I don't want to be the person to be like, all this stuff is going on, whether it's Jeremy Upstein um, or this or R. Kelly. It's just the fact of the matter that we're not, we're not focusing on what's going on mentally. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because realistically, I guess, but the difference between R. Kelly and Hugh Hefner is that what all these grown women said? Yes, I don't fucking know. You tell me. And there's a documentary with uh, about the um, Playboy bunnies now too, about how Hugh Hefner was and all that yeah, shit. Uh, Hugh Hefner was. Yep. Now Hugh Hefner's dead, yeah. right? Is Hugh Hefner's dead? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what uh -huh. I'm saying. It's like. This McMahon but ain't trying know, to die because y'all want to sit there and throw some rumors. He like, oh, no, nah, we ain't going to do that. Oh, yeah. Got more money to give y'all. So, and and if, you know, if you notice, he's been inserting himself on TV ever since the story dropped. He's right front and center. Nah, but that's the thing. Like, that, nah, y'all ain't getting me that way. No, no. I, I heard what you said. He's been on TV three times. You know what I'm saying? Talking about no chance is what you got. Okay? Mm -hmm. But he's doing that for public opinion. Yep. Because while he's doing that, that's when they threw that that uh, that uh rape case from back in the day. Well, not the rape case. I'm sorry. She was on Rivera, Gerardo Rivera, saying that this yeah. man allegedly raped her and was going to give her $500,000 uh -huh. a year. And I'm in my mind, I'm like, hold up. This is like, my boy Smart is like, yo, this is, this is the trickle down. They wilding on Vince McMahon. And I don't mean to laugh because I'm not trying to defend Vince McMahon. I'm just laughing at how the news and how we spend some of this stuff. Cause it's like, yo, I'm not saying this guy is right at all. I'm just making the point of really right. in 1989, I mean, 1986, whatever that year it was somewhere between 86 to uh, 90, but she just, when she got on. This big yep. man is giving out five hundred thousand dollars to people. I bet you Hulk Hogan was like, "Yo, you giving out five hundred thousand dollars to people? Like, what the fuck is going on? Please give me that fucking money." You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it just exactly. it doesn't add up all the time. You know what I mean? Like, hey, do I think R. Kelly is like super guilty with all this? I'm gonna be honest with you. The answer is fucking no. When you have parents mm -hmm. that sign their kid on to go to Trump Tower in fucking Atlanta to go be a uh, quote unquote a singer, and they wind up being some singer sex slave. I blame the parents on that. Who the fuck is you to be taking into fucking R. Kelly? Like, R. Kelly. The same guy that married exactly. fucking Aaliyah at fucking 15 years old. That's what you do? Yeah. That's what you do? Yo, man, you better off sending your kid to Summer Walker's house. Like, go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Like, what are you talking about? There's so many people that, are, exactly. that had that level of talent that can help groom your child. You wanted your kid to be in s and R. Kelly's basement. Well, hey, you know, there you go. So I don't blame, you know, it's just hard. 
he really like just there did all that smoke to Kelly. Like Kelly deserves a lot of smoke, but I just think there's a lot of uh, self righteousness and morality checks that need to be with all the other people that's surrounding this uh, mess as well. Yeah, that I, I agree. agree. I, I definitely agree. I think um, ahead, KT. also the problem is this kind of predatory behavior has been enabled for so long amongst uh, for years because the people it was happening to a, mo a lot of the times didn't have a voice where they could even you know or even if they spoke out their voice was suppressed you know what i mean so um right. i mean there is as far as and i'm not saying it's only men you know i know that it's not but i'm saying for a long time these kinds of things this predatory behavior towards women was just accepted it was just accepted and you know as a woman you could speak out you could say something but won't nobody hearing you for a long time you know now and that's why i have and that's why i have like this i get i just cringe when uh women are suspect with these accusations I hate that shit. No, nah, but if don't, but don't, but don't I hate mean, on if, that because this, this is where, like, my mom always tell me she was like, "Listen, it's some really good women out here, and it's some foul ass women out here too." You know what I'm saying? And we gonna say the same thing about men. Yep. So for me, it's like, yo, I know there's some foul play going on. It's just like child support. No disrespect, because I'm not even trying to be pro man about that. It's just that child support supports the woman. Because there was a time in America where women did not have to work. I love it. See, again, American rhetoric, especially when it comes from women. No disrespect, KT. You're cool. I'm just saying. Women will say, women weren't allowed to work. No. they it, it, Maybe they could, but for, for the most part, what it was was men were working. They were taking care of the woman. And then what happened was the men started cheating around on the women. And the women are like, damn, I got to wait for this man to really divorce me or get rid of stuff so I can live my own life. Now, not even now, I mean, women was doing this, what I'm about to say, for 40, 50 years. But now it's publicized where women are making their money, which means women are making their own decisions where women should be taken seriously. And women are being taken seriously in the Me Too movement. What happened? Where people are just like, ah, you know what? That was some foul play. Let's keep it all business as usual. When women started lying. When the woman lied about the lacrosse yeah. team. Amber Heard lied about debt. The other woman that lied about Robert Downey Jr. Um, the stuff with Bill Cosby. Listen, Bill Cosby can go to jail, sure. But let's just be for real for a second. Quaaludes was a drug of preference and choice in the 80s. You know what I mean? So... It's those things where we're not looking at a two-way street because men got to run the world or run the country based on the workforce. When women get to make their own money, now the playing field is even. But I don't like when women, it's not even men too, they blame men like men did all this shit we did wrong. No, listen, the only people you blame when it comes to men is the white man for the totalitarianness of the country. Other than that, it's, yo... I'm glad that women have all the basic rights and get to live the basic rights the same way a man do. Because now it's not that it's an even playing field still. It's just more of, yo, there's some foul ass people, men and women alike, period. I agree. And man, this can get super, super deep. And this is something when, whenever we get this special to where we can all kind of link up, we get that venue said it and we 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 get the the pot avengers tower which it probably won't be a tower but you know it'd be a a, a location it'd be like but, a you big, know it would be a superhero p you know, on, I, on, the, on the building Cardi B, yeah. I'm be there tomorrow. Yeah, exactly so like, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah baby come uh, uncle cliff uh, uh, come with the pink I'm no interested. no it's not clifford calm it down uncle cliff yeah this ain't no, the pink uh -uh, no. pot avengers 
Nope. They go to Mississippi. No, no it's not. <laughs> it's just, this ain't that part. But, oh, man. Oh, man. Well, so here's what I want you guys to do for the listeners. You know, just shoot those emails. Talk my credo at gmail.com. Um, hit us up on social media. Leave those reviews. Thank y'all for the reviews that y'all been leaving. Um, and th- th- this is an ongoing discussion, and we want to find some ways to include you guys in the discussion. So, you know, leave those, continue to leave those comments. We're going to try to get those addressed uh, and get you guys' opinions of once we get enough interest and enough for the following, you know, we can get some people calling in and, and, you know, we can get that, that town hall meeting stuff going as well. But, but man, look, it's good to be back. I'm, I'm, I'm back and ready to get this thing going. Y'all be sure. Thank you guys for listening again. Continue to like comment, subscribe, however you're listening, follow us, show that support. It means the world to us. Uh, be sure to check out the late night flight podcast. It is dope, dope, dope stuff. Uh, also be on the lookout for the pod Avengers. Uh, it is unlike is th- this is the full course meal. You, you check out the late night flight. You check out talk my credo. You check out pod Avengers. You will have everything. You will have no need to listen to anything else. Cause between those three platforms, I promise you everything will be covered. I promise you. So man, we're going to get up out of here, man. We thank y'all once again on behalf of my fam. Nasur Nuru, KT. This is your boy Dante on another episode of Talk My Credo, episode 88. Stay fly, stay blessed. And until next time, peace out, y'all.